What did I say last week? That at the rate we're going, Senshi's gonna get shot in the head or something just because, like, the way they keep escalating the brutality on these characters. Little did I know that the former party member of our boys group would get pushed in the way by this stupid gnome who's like, don't worry, I, I can deal with this. No, I can't throws that fool in front of the crossfire and that's a legit death that ain't clickbait bitch that is a legit death of shot in the head dragging the body back even if you revive that fool the disrespect that is one of the most out of pocket things i've seen for a character death in a long time and it's got to be in a top 10 what the hell moment for me in terms of there's no way because you just don't expect it there's a lot of times I expect a character to get hurt, and I expected her to get hurt. But I'm thinking, oh, chest shot, arm shot, any, hell, even blowing off a limb, I would have expected. But it's the head, and I'm like, this is one of the rare cases where an anime has resurrection magic, but it doesn't feel like it's guaranteed people can come back, because here's the thing, if that little bastard would have got shot there, they would have been screwed. Like, there was no one else coming. And honestly, like, it just feels like there's so many ways for shit to go wrong. Marcel almost had to go back to the surface and be removed from this party because there was no way for her to recover her magic if it wasn't for drinking the elixir of magic that was that that spirit and just to further add so people don't be like well they confirmed in this episode that spirits will always be there so it's always fine that only works if basically there's someone to heal them they know where the body is there's a lot of ways that you could get killed and not be able to come back and this is like what i like about the resurrection is there's a good way you can come back but it ain't guaranteed if the body ain't found or you don't have a healer i love what this show's doing and now it can make me bust out laughing because I'm in such disbelief that they just casually kill characters for the lulls. I have a full live reaction to this week's episode of Delicious and Touch It over on my Patreon. If you want to see my full and get thoughts, they're over there if you're interested. Jesus, man, this was by far my favorite episode of the show, no questions asked. It had unexpected comedy, unexpected disbelief moments. It was creative, it had some emotion, but most importantly, it just feels like when you look at an episode like this, these are the episodes that really separate Delicious and Dungeon from other dungeon crawling anime. It's not simply that it also does some crazy cooking, it's the fact that the entire formula of an episode like this doesn't feel like any anime I've seen that dungeon crawls, which is really what the show is at the end of the day. Look at what they ended up doing emotionally, right? If you really take the a very small way to explain this episode, you have a reunion between party members who obviously they separated, maybe not on the best of terms, but obviously we need some help. Please come back with us. Well, obviously we have to look at it from a adventurous point of view, look at how she would be like basically doing anything for money, no morals, how quickly everything spreads in the dungeon crawling world. Everything's making sense, but most importantly, we're at a situation where this little gnome bastard, who's talented, mind you, like he's very, very talented, uh, things like, oh, no worries, we can, nope, can't do it. Okay, I got, I got her killed, so we'll revive her, and now we're gonna hit the road, Jack. Because what are you supposed to do other than wait it out at that point? Well, you have our very clever characters who apparently turned the rarest alloy, the rarest metal that can deflect dragon breath, break dragon bones, the best of the best. My boy Senshi turned a shield made of that into a pot. I didn't think I could love this man any more than I already did, but he just cemented himself even further as being best boy. He can take that helmet off, show that luscious beard in his hair and all its glory, but it's the fact that that's the reason probably a lot of our shit has tasted as good as it is. Because when you make a stew, the secret to a stew is letting it cook for like a good 16 hours. Let it soak in all those flavors, right? They cook in a couple hours and that shit be tasting great as if the flavors are marinating for days. Because apparently it just tastes really good cooked in that metal. It's just the little things about this show, but it's like the emotion, right? Because Marcel really doesn't want to go, but she would have died if she continued. Like, I mean, potentially if we would have got past that spirit, but like... It just doesn't seem like you can just wait a couple of days and it's going to come back. You need some sort of potion, uh, maybe a ritual or something. Like, she would have needed to go back to the surface. And I was really hoping we were going to join and have a fifth member because, I mean, if she's been slaying dragons before, I mean, I just wanted to see more of that personally. But I like the progression that they went with. The idea of using the lid and the paw in order to, like, capture it 
and then bring it to the flame. And then obviously, because if we drink it, then most likely we'll recover some magic. But as Senshi says, you usually need something to help absorb it. So we make a tentacle stew. And I'll admit, as a hater of a lot of what they eat, that shit looked good. The banana peel that they did was a little questionable, but once they started cooking with all the herbs and spices and stuff, that actually looked like a pretty tasty stew, if I'm being honest. And apparently her magic is back, which is nice, because without a mage, I mean, we're kind of shit out of luck. But there was just something so charming and they kind of sprinkled in that emotion. They gave you that kind of like, oh, there's some backstory here. What happened about, you know, why she left. And then, you know, even a character like Chilchuck, I've been wanting to see a bit more from Chilchuck. And I'm glad that they gave him at the very end of the episode something to kind of like, you know, he's the type of character that wouldn't do something for free. And he still isn't going to do something for free. But at the same time, you know, you got to see things through to the end. You got to help your friends. It's just you're going to expect something at the finish line, so to speak. And I like just learning a bit more about these characters, but most importantly, how they sprinkle in world building about what adventurers believe in what they would normally do and the idea that we were about to send our girl away and honestly I didn't know how she was gonna get back I wasn't sure if there was gonna be like a stone an amulet that she could hone in on and teleport back to it just wasn't looking good and the way they dealt with it was so clever because when you hear of drinking a water spirit immediately my thought is it's gonna shoot through your throat like you're gonna try to drink that bitch and it's just gonna rip through you and she literally envisioned exactly that this show does what you expect in terms of like oh it it's gonna click with your mind and what you're probably thinking but it's also gonna do 12 other things you're probably not anticipating and it's just fantastic i just love the fact that this is a show that you can casually see how if someone doesn't come by or you run out of magic or you don't have a certain something you can easily die and a couple of characters died in this episode sure they got brought back but what happens when you run out of magic if you get caught in something or what happens if you accidentally die fighting a water spirit and you sink to the bottom of that that little riverbed or the lake or whatever the hell you want to call that pond area is someone gonna know you're down there like there's a lot of ways shit can go bad and while you expect the characters to probably pull through when you do see the unexpected headshot which i can't help but like i'm literally saying oh man he's gonna push that bitch and i'm like i was like i didn't actually mean you needed to do that there's something so hilarious and out of pocket about how the show handles carnage but how it also manages to be so emotional all at the same time there's a very subtle moment, which I appreciate. I think that gnome was a bit of a D-bag. By a bit, I mean quite a bit. I do appreciate when he's about to teleport out, he looks at her and realizes that she wants to stay behind. And he kind of like, is like, <sighs> as if, go help do what you gotta do it's fine doesn't want to but at least there is some compassion there just know that if it comes to it because he knows he can revive you he'll toss you in front of that train without much struggle which i guess is correct but it's the lack of empathy of like you know i didn't want to do that it's just i knew if you died i'd be able to revive you it's like it's fine it's like what the hell is this world either way this was a very good episode my personal favorite by far i'm excited to see where they're gonna take it next episode let me know what you thought down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're around here of course ring that bell and like i mentioned we had that full live reaction over on my patreon and hey while you're over there i'll also give you a video shout out all right so today we got rogue knight pranay sumshwar and darian smith so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one